Hello everybody, this is Miss Murphy. Welcome back. Um, I'm going to start today by talking about your next step um, for your assignment on Monday, which is your thumbnail sketches. So we went through the week practicing your forms and values drawing. So this is what we practiced um, for your assignment this week, just to get us started and to get you familiar with um, just basic observation of shapes and forms, as well as applying value um, to create some of those realistic qualities that we observe in a three-dimensional form. So next week, we're gonna be getting into a larger composition where we're going to be using the forms that we've been practicing and in order to do that, we need to create some sketches. So you are going to need your sketch paper, eight and a half by 11, nine by 12, whatever you have available, um, and your pencil and your eraser, of course. Um, and um, the first thing we normally do when we draw out our thumbnail sketches, I'm just gonna draw out three, squares. Um, I would make sure these are a decent size. This is a good size right here that I have. Um, <clears throat> so not really too small. I would say that's probably like three inches wide there. So I'm just going to draw my three squares down on my paper. They don't have to be perfect. If you want to use a ruler, and you feel the need to do that, you can. Um, so this is a larger example of one I showed you during our virtual class session where I was planning out my forms. So the objective of this assignment is to plan three different compositions using all four of the forms that we practice. And you have to have at least six to eight forms in your larger composition that we're going to be doing next week. So in your practice thumbnail sketches, you should have at least six to eight forms. And each one is a different composition where you are thinking about the placement and arrangement of your forms. So since we really only practiced four forms, you'll probably, you, you will be repeating one um, I repeated the, the sphere. You might have to repeat another one. So I also repeat, uh, repeated the cone. And that's okay because I'm trying to think about how to use the space here. Um, I'm going to be introducing some other forms next week, but this is just for our practice to start getting our composition ideas in um, our mind. So. I'm going to start with my sketch and I'm going to think about a composition for my first one. And this does not require any value in it as far as light and dark value. This is only drawing out the forms. So I'm going to start and think about also, you want to have at least two areas. I'm just focusing in on this one where you have one, where you have your forms going off the page. I would say even three is good. The whole reason behind that is so that we're using this space well and that it also creates a sense of space and depth in your drawing, makes things look like they're going further back when you have something going off the page. So make sure you crop two of your forms in each of your sketches. So <clears throat> I think I recall saying in class how I turn my paper around in different directions. And the reason I do that is so that I also add a little more variety to my drawing and then it doesn't limit me to just looking at it from one direction and also consider the scale of your objects. Scale can also create a sense of depth. <clears throat> the other thing that I mentioned, the other aspect of this that's going to help you show space and depth is going to be overlapping of your forms. So creating these layers in here. So what I'm going to do here, 
I would like you to have at least one to two areas. I think two is actually a good amount to have where you have to have an area where you have your forms overlapping. And what you notice already is that it already looks like it's coming towards you. It's getting closer and these objects are kind of floating in the background. So it's giving a sense of space and depth. Um, and I notice I have a big empty space over here. And um, remember that you have to have all your forms which were the cone, cylinder, sphere, and cube. I'm looking here, I have all of them thus far. And I think I'm gonna add one more right here. And it, like I said, I also like to turn it in different directions just so I can see, you know, from a different perspective, which really actually helps my composition quite a bit when I turn it around. So I have one idea so far, that's great. And this space is okay, because it's a good balance, because we are gonna eventually be thinking about something to add in there, which I'll talk about that next week. So for my next one, I'm gonna, you know, I would suggest just starting with a different form. The last time I did this, I started with my cube. Now I'm going to start with my cone. So I'm gonna start with my cone. I'm going to really challenge myself to think outside of my original idea there and I'm going to even you know what I'm going to enlarge my cube a little bit here just to make it look like it's coming forward so I've already created another little aspect of depth there and I'm going to have one of my spheres much further back here. I'm going to add another, I'm, for some reason I feel like I wanna add another cone right here, but I'm gonna overlap it because remember you wanna overlap at least one of your forms or more. So at least two sections of that at least because it really does make a difference and really helps your composition out. So I'm missing my cylinder. So I wanna think about where I'm gonna put that and I'm gonna put that right about here and I want it going off the page. So I'm gonna have my cylinder right here. And notice how my cube is actually, you can't see the whole cube um, but I enlarged it in order to make it look like these objects are smaller in the background. I think I'm also just gonna add another cube kind of floating away in the distance. So maybe imagine if it was floating, what would it look like? And it creates another, um, you know, kind of foreground, middle ground, background effect here when you make something smaller in the background, that sense of space and depth is accentuated. So I already have one, two sketches. I'm gonna do one last one. I haven't started with my sphere yet, so I'm gonna put my sphere right here and I'm just gonna think about my placement, turn my objects, or turn my paper around, I shall say. On this one, I'm not gonna show the top of the cylinder here. And I'm going to turn my turn the angle of my cone down here. But I'm gonna do something where I can see like the bottom of my cone on this one so it looks like it's kind of floating in another direction. And so it's also repeating this shape here. And then I feel like I wanna do a cube overlapping. So that's gonna be my overlapping area. And I've already made sure that I have two sections where my forms are floating off the edge known as cropping. So this is what you need to do for your assignment on Monday. Make sure they all look different. Now, if you wanna take it a step further just for yourself, and you have a little time that you want to use to practice this weekend, 
what you could do is just maybe pick one and imagine there's a direction of light and then shade in where you would see that light and challenge yourself to do that. That's your artist challenge. If you wanna take it a step further and just pick even one of them just to practice, like this one, I might have the light hitting over here. So you can see what I mean by that. So if you wanna take it upon yourself and take the artist challenge of adding value into one of yours and imagining there's a light source in one good direction there and see how it turns out because we will be doing this in our larger ones. So you might wanna just practice a little bit if you have some time to do that this weekend. Other than that, if you don't do that, then you just need the three sketches and then you'll just upload those onto Canvas. All right, hope this helps. Thank you.